The Dragon Ball Legends second year anniversary will be coming up very soon. And truthfully speaking, I am very excited to see what they bring to the table. But until then, I think we have a bit of room to actually speculate on what they may or may not bring to the game. So today, we're going to talk about what I would like to see in the Dragon Ball Legends second year anniversary. The first thing I would like to see in the second year anniversary is actually a refinement to the Zenkai system. Now, Zenkai units are cool. They are very powerful, but it's, it's safe to say that they still do tailor towards pay to play. And that's not a good thing because it completely alienates the free to play base. And we did recently just get the Zenkai Kid Goku, which was our very first free to play Zenkai unit. And a lot of people did manage to get him up to Zenkai level seven, but that's only one unit out of the multitude of units that we have now that are able to achieve Zenkai Awakening. So I think that there should be a bit more of a streamlined system where it's available to practically everyone, where there's still a challenge, but it's not completely unobtainable, if you will. I, I still think that one of the biggest issues of the Zenkai system is the fact that you have to have the unit up to seven stars by bare minimum to be able to get them up to, you know, Zenkai level one. And I think that's kind of ridiculous because again, for the free to play base, that means that, uh, you know, excluding the Kid Goku that we just got for Zenkai Awakening, you would have to summon a unit multiple times over and over and over again, just to get them up to seven stars. And for a lot of people who are free to play, that's not possible. So again, a bit more of a streamlined system or like, you know, some tweaks here and there, like maybe get rid of the star requirement or maybe lower the requirement, or again, just find some way to streamline the method. That way it's available for everyone instead of making it particularly for one player base. And honestly, along with the Zenkai system, you do also have the star system too. And that is something I would like to see get refined because I still think that the implementation of 14 stars was completely unnecessary. Like you still get the buffs, which is nice, but now it's just unnecessarily convoluted. So I think that they should refine the star system, either bring it back down to seven stars, which was perfectly fine, or find a way to make it a bit more appealing to everyone. One thing that was added to Legends a little while ago was the guild system. And truthfully speaking, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it could absolutely be better because for what it offers, well, truthfully speaking, it doesn't really offer much except for the inclusion of whoever you decide to add into your guild. So I think there should be a bigger incentive to start paying attention a bit more to that particular feature. And one thing I would absolutely love to see them include would be a guild war system. A guild war system would be absolutely awesome to include in the game because it gives you a bigger incentive to actually check in on your guild. Right now, it kind of just pins you up against a rival guild. And literally all you have to do is just either play the game, do adventures, PVP, summon, stuff like that. And then you get points and that's how you go up on the ranking. And that's all fine and good. But when I think about a guild, I want to be able to battle the other guild members. And I think that'll be an awesome inclusion to put in the guild system. So for example, let's say that you're paired up with your rival guild and you start fighting their members, you beat a lot of their members, or maybe it's leader versus leader and you beat the leader or whatever the case may be. And you get amazing rewards for doing so. Or maybe that, you know, when you beat guild members, you start climbing up the ranks, you get paired up against another rival guild. You can go up from being completely unranked to bronze, silver, or gold, or whatever the case may be. Some sort of incentive to constantly check on the guild system apart from just, you know, getting free energy refills, um, getting, you know, the currency for the guild system. And that's really it. I mean, I love the aspect of them kind of, you know, bringing the community within the guild system, but there's not really much of a reason to check in on it because it doesn't really do much. So I would love to see them add a guild war system. Plus, I, I think it will just genuinely be awesome to, you know, actually fight the other guild, your rival guild. So that would be kind of cool. And I think that um, they should have like a leader versus leader segment, right? Where 
all the other guild members can fight each other, right? Like, who are obviously not the leader can fight the rival guild who are, you know, not the leader, but only the leaders can fight each other. And if the leader fights, you know, the other leader and they win, then everybody in the guild gets a really good reward. Like I said earlier, for example, you beat the leader, everybody in the guild gets a thousand crystals. I think that would be awesome. It's, it's free to play, which is completely beneficial. And that is a whole multi summon right there. So that would be awesome. It would give a lot of people reasons to strengthen their guild, get their units looking right and do whatever they have to, to, you know, help, I guess, because maybe there's like lesser rewards for um, beating other guild members, right? Like maybe you get like, I don't know, 50, 100 crystals every time you beat like a rival guild member or whatever the case may be. This could be a good way to give us free to play crystals in the long run because when story mode is over then all we really have are events and unless you're giving us like 2,000 crystals each event i don't think much is going to come from that so guild wars there is so much potential that they can do with that the question is if they'll actually do it i think it's safe to say that we're going to be receiving super saiyan god shallot during the second year anniversary much like with the first year anniversary and how we got super saiyan 2 shallot but to this very day and i think i said this on like twitter or discord or something of the sort but it makes absolutely no sense how in two years deep into the game the only free to play like actual story mode unit that we have is shallot and obviously like you know that makes sense it's his game right but there are two other characters who are within the story mode that are brand new characters in the Dragon Ball universe, and we still do not have access to actually attain those characters. And they are Zaha and Giblet. They should be obtainable by this point. Now, the question is, what kind of unit will they be, right? Because we do have seven element factors, so I'm about to say six, but we have seven element factors. You have the main five, which are red, blue, green, purple, and yellow. And then the two unique ones, which are dark and light. Now, Shallot is the only light type in the game. So I don't expect any other unit to take that typing, but the only other type that's left out would be the dark type. And I think that it would make a lot more sense, especially for Giblet to bring not only those units into the game, well, make them obtainable, but to also finally give us the usage of the dark type because it would be a great typing, honestly speaking. Granted, I mean, you know, they would automatically be meta units because the dark type has absolute element factor advantage against the five main element factor types, but they are still weak to shallot. So it kind of balances out like you could bring a dark type, but as long as somebody has that, I'm pretty sure at that point, Super Saiyan God Shallot, then they would probably not stand a chance. Shallot would probably run straight through them. So bring in some more of the units from the story mode. Again, I've been saying for a, many months, many months, why is Zaha not playable? Giblet is still in the gray area because, you know, you've seen him, you know, a bit in story mode here and there. Um, you know, when he was first like the Red Hooded Saiyan, now he's Ghibli because we know his name. We know what he can do. And what's crazy is, again, there is gameplay of Ghibli out there. And we've seen that he has the block feature. Um, if you guys don't know, the block feature was actually in the game during the beta stages where you would automatically block attacks at random. It wasn't the best thing because, well, you could never predict when you were going to block an attack. But it was still solid because it either mitigated damage or, you know, whatever the case may be. But um, I don't think that if we were to get Giblet, he would play like that. Even at that, the block system isn't even implemented like that anymore. But um, it, it would be cool to see him have like that. Or if that's like his unique perk that he could block, then that would be kind of cool. But there are a lot of things that they can do. But all in all, I would love to see them bring in dark type units. I, I think it's well beyond time. It makes no sense that we have all five or the main five element factors. Then we have light types and we have no access to the dark type. They don't need the dark key to access that typing at all. So it would be cool to actually go up against a dark type unit. That plus, I mean, my man Zaha's kind of clean, bro. Look, I'm tired of not being able to play as him. 
add my boy Zaha. If you're not gonna give us Giblet, give us Zaha already, bro. That is my boy. And last but not least, it's not an anniversary if we don't talk about the new units who are going to be coming in the banner. And there are so many units that we can go from. I mean, obviously we have Vegito Blue, we have Fusamasu, we have Gogeta Blue, we have um, Omega Shenron and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which truthfully speaking, if they were anniversary units, I wouldn't be that excited, but still a possibility. I'm pretty sure if they were, they'd be extremely strong. And of course we have Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren. Those are probably going to be the main units for any anniversary that would get anybody hype. And out of all of those units, I think that the ones that we're going to receive will be Vegito Blue and Fusamasu. Now, I think it's way too early for us to get Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren. Maybe for like the third year anniversary, I can see it. But, um, or heck, if we're lucky, uh, maybe the two and a half year anniversary we could get them. But um, I still think it's too early for them for now, right? Uh, there are still like a few characters from the Tournament of Power that we don't have. Granted, I'm still surprised that we got Kefla as early as we did, but I don't think it's their time just yet, right? But with Vegito Blue and Fusamasu, I'm all for that. I mean, they were already promoting their figures in the new section of Dragon Ball Legends. I think they were also promoting it in Dokkan Battle as well. I could be wrong about that. So it makes sense to actually bring those two in the game. Not only that, Fusion Warrior, though a really good tag right now, it's safe to say that there are two units that could absolutely be replaced on that tag. And they are, or I was about to say Fusion Monster. Um, they are Vegito and Gogeta. And the reason why I say that is because we've had multiple green units come to that tag already, with the recent one being Kefla, she's definitely not going anywhere. We just had a brand new yellow unit join the squad, which was the Transforming Vegito. He's not going anywhere. And we just got transforming go tanks to join this squad as the new red unit. He's not going anywhere. And also, when it comes down to the purple units, we only have two, which are Vegito and uh, I believe Super Saiyan go tanks. And with the blue units, we literally only have one. So, yeah, it's time to actually bring in some new blood for those particular, um, I was about to say tags, but on um, those particular element factors. And I think Vegito blue. And Fuse of Monster would actually help out a lot. Plus, in technicality, with what they did with Ella Vegeta, they would both have the future tag. So it's not as if they're specifically stuck on Fusion Warrior. I mean, alone, like Fuse of Monster and uh, Vegito would be God Key. They would be future. Um, I, I, well, Vegito would be saying uh, uh, Fuse of Monster is not really. It's that's a whole thing, but. It's not as if they won't be able to fit in other spots as well. So I would absolutely love to see Vegito Blue and Fuse Monster be the anniversary units. Um, if they can throw in like a third unit, I'd be for it. Because when it came down to the first year anniversary, we had five new units. I don't know who else they could. Well, no, that's not true. They could add Rage Trunks. That would actually be kind of nice. So you could get um, Vegito Blue, um, Fusamasu, Rage Trunks, and that would kind of complete future, right? But um, apart from that, I, I really don't know what else they could add. Uh, apart from one thing, if we don't get Rage Trunks, then if we get Vegito Blue, I expect uh, Final Kamehameha to be a legendary finish. That would be absolutely insane and if they just don't do it, I would be severely disappointed. But if that's only if we get Fusamasu and Vegito Blue, but if we get Rage Trunks with it, then I believe he should be the one with the legendary finish. Or heck, they could do both. I mean, we've already had a step up banner where they've given us two legendary finish units at one time, which was uh, the banners with um, LF Frieza and LF Piccolo. So it's not impossible for them to give us two LF units in one banner. So if that's the case, give Vegito a legendary finish and give Trunks a legendary finish. And I would be all around good. But all in all, the two I see for sure are Fusamasu and Vegito Blue. If we're lucky and we get another unit, then by extension, Rage Trunks. Those would be some solid anniversary units, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that I probably haven't covered, uh, things that I probably didn't think about 
concerning the second year anniversary, whether it be units to see or game modes or other things like, you know, quality of life changes that they can add into the game. Again, I still stand by, we should get an energy tank increase, but if I have missed anything, or if you guys have your own thoughts on what you would like to see in the second year anniversary, let me know in the comment section below. But with that being said, I'm Inakuba, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.